Hello and welcome to Louis Berthoud's Music Reviews. Today I'm reviewing Godspeedy Black Emperors at State's End. Esteemed post-rockers Godspeedy Black Emperor are back at it again with his new record here. At State's End is the band's seventh studio album and uh, was released about a few days ago. So really, these are the fresh, fresh new opinions. I, like most people, got into this band through the, the highly influential and beloved album Lift Your Skinny Fists Like Antennas to Heaven, and I even owned the, the double vinyl of it back in the day, which I played quite a fair bit. However, even at an earlier point in my life, I do remember just struggling with this album a little bit, and this band in general, um, and that's only been consolidated with time, I think, to the point now where um, I do find Lift Your Skinny Fists just to be a tad arduous and... To be honest, it has a lot of builds, but there's not a great deal of payoff or actual substance to it, I find, anyway. I, I actually prefer the less grandiose and more personal A Silver Mount Zion album that was released the same year, in 2000. I think the title is something like, He Has Left Us Alone, but blah blah blah, there's a lot more words which <laughs> um, go in that title, which you can find out on the internet, but I certainly can't remember it. But yeah, I find that album is a lot more striking and original and the the blend of genres is a lot more far-reaching but i digress we're not here to talk about silver mount zion nor are we here to talk about godspeed's early work we're here to talk about this new record here god's p at state's end i think the first aspect to mention is the the sound of this record um which i think on the whole is pretty fantastic um there's a great balance between rock sounds like, you know, the crunch of a bass or the, the real fuzz of a guitar, with more neoclassical style string parts, which are, are woven together very, very well. I'd say the strings are actually so well integrated into the, the mix, and the arrangement, that you might not even notice they're there if you're not listening out for them, which, in my mind, speaks to how well put together this album is. So the production is great, it's a triumph, really. Um, but to make a great record, you can't just have a great sound, you need substance as well. And to be honest, I do find a lot of the middle tracks on this album, they do... I don't find that they explore much harmonic or melodic ground. They don't explore much in that regard. Similarly, the, the dynamic contrast isn't really accentuated that much. And I do find they just sort of chug along these middle tracks, but they don't really offer any sort of interest beyond just like, oh, they did that there, or oh, they did that there. It just kind of feels like... Business as usual for Godspeedy Black Emperor at this stage in their career. I even wrote down that the the music can feel quite safe at times, and it often feels like the sort of the sort of music you can imagine in the background in a film, but not the sort of music that would like I don't know accompany my day to day activities while I'm listening that kind of thing. But yeah, like I say, despite that, the record begins and ends very strongly, and I'm going to talk about why I think that is in three, two, one. The record begins with quite a promising sort of piece of collaged sound, which is it's immediately more imaginative and um, engaging, I think, than some of the uh, the more like half-assed vocal samples that you that crop up in Lift Your Skinny Fists, for example. And I even wrote down here that it it, it delivers a similar sense of dread <laughs> that um, a song like "I Was a Prisoner in Your Skull" by Swan does, and it, it, it really does set up the record quite. Um, Quite well. You know, they don't put it all down at once, they kind of ease you in with these more wispy sound collage pieces. Later, a scorching drone of fuzzed out guitar and bowed strings really warms up the mix, warms it up in contrast to those sort of stark, um, uneasy moments of the intro. And the, the sound gets warmer still as a solo guitar begins to pick out an octave, and we notice that the song has changed to Job's Lament, track two. And oh boy, what a song Job's Lament is. The band really do put their best foot forward, I think, on this track. Um, and it just really, the second half especially, really does feel like the payoff I kind of want from every Godspeedy Black Emperor song, but oftentimes I don't really feel I get. Around halfway through the song, the drums kick in with a really nice and surprisingly hefty sounding military style snare part and then later the harmony expands, it's been on one note so far, but it, it expands into this quite nice um, little Lydian melody in B flat and I can't help but think 
moments like the midway point of Job's Lament would work so well live. And I haven't actually seen the band live, but I wouldn't be surprised if <clears throat> it's better than the recordings, just based on what I've heard. And I wonder if that is the case. If anyone has seen the band live, please comment below. Is it better than the recording or am I, am I wrong here? Back to the song. I feel like the highlight of the album, sorry, the highlight of the song, but indeed the album as well, comes at about six minutes 40, I've written it down, where um, the bass starts to, it starts to climb up into the higher registers. And it's just recorded so well, it just pops out of the mix while still providing the much needed kind of subbiness. Um, and it's just a wonderful moment. It gives me um, chills each time I hear it. It's a moment where every instrument just seems to soar. Even though we're still tied to that, that sort of B flat pedal point that I mentioned before. It's like we're flying, but we're kind of tethered to the ground by a piece of string or something, so we can't go too far. There's still definitely a sense of foreboding, even though it is sawing. And then, about a minute later, the drums really start hammering um, around the 7.30 minute mark. And I did just write down here that it's just, it's just effing great. It really is, um, it's just great music, really exciting rock music. And I'm surprised that at this stage in their career, Godspeed can still whip up something as interesting as this. I'm not so thrilled by the next song, the sort of power ballad-esque Glaciers, which kind of almost sounds like a strange combination of like a professionally recorded Lerales' Denude playing a cover of like a Dream Theatre song or something. It's kind of got that theatrical element to it. Um, while I don't entirely dislike it, um, it does, for me, signify the potential decline in quality in this album near the middle. Metal, metal, metal on one of the shorter songs, Fire at Static Valley, I think is what it's called. There's definitely a strong sense of dread with a steady beating of a low drum, as well as wailing slide guitar and bowed strings, all kind of underpinned by a consistent guitar line, which um, plays throughout the whole song. And I wrote down, it feels like it's good for walking through an abandoned village, perhaps, or accompanying a funeral march, but, um, as far as ap uh, practical applications for this song in like a day-to-day -day context, I can't really imagine myself wanting to put it on too much. Um, again, it just feels like movie music. After some politically charged samples, uh, the first bass note careers in on the third song, um, whose title I haven't written down, but I think it's called Government Came or something like that. But yeah, don't quote me on that. I'll have to probably uh, amend this in the, the later editing of the video. And interestingly enough, the ensemble Godspeedy Black Emperor does sound like they're sort of improvising almost at a quite a free tempo. It doesn't feel like we're locked into a groove here. It's very rubato and free. And to be honest though, I do find the actual sonic materials used aren't really that great, and actually some of the improvisations do just sound a little bit awkward at the, the start of this song. It kind of sounds like a band, I don't know, practicing before they're going to do a gig, or maybe like an extended live intro that you might get. However, when it's here, Pride and Place, in track three of this album, I do find it's a little bit unwarranted, this kind of improvised intro. And it's not really until the next track, Cliff's Gaze, that we get another, I think, true highlight of the album. Um, it begins with another pedal point, another kind of droning one note pedal point um, that seems to employ parts of the harmonic series to kind of add extra resonance, I think, and give it quite a floaty sound. And it does mean that when the, the band do eventually change chord around the two or three minute mark, it's all the more badass sounding just because we have been sort of held in, in tension on this, this very resonant one note pedal. It's certainly a stronger introductory section than the previous track, and, and it means that when the drums do come in with their sort of quite predictable, to be honest, groove halfway through the song, I'm kind of more on board because I've actually, you know, enjoyed the intro and I'm kind of excited to hear where the band go next. And yeah, this second half of the song, for me, it really, it, it has quite an earnest, triumphant feel, I think, almost. It's, it's again quite theatrical sounding and, and really... It almost sounds like a post-rock musical or something, which I actually really do enjoy, and I think it's, it's really well deserved at the end of the album. It feels like the band are quite determined. They're not just coasting, you know, they're not playing material that they've played a hundred times before, you know. They're really trying something new and, and 
creating what I think is quite a poignant moment on the end of the album. A particular highlight for me in the, in the second half of this track is around the 5.30 minute mark where you just hear this really subtle string line. It's just one note kind of played dit, 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 dit over the top, but it, it comes through the mix so well and it, it just, yeah, it makes me feel happy. It, it's, it's a very happy sounding little moment, um, which really does add to the, to my enjoyment, I think, of the, the track and then of, an album, of the album as a whole, because obviously if you've got a decent sort of ending track, then naturally your album is going to be stronger. Then after this more theatrical outro, we get sort of the true outro of the album, which is the final song entitled, I haven't written it down, but it's a lot more of an ambient kind of um, floaty outro. I think it's actually quite pretty. The first time I heard it, I kind of thought, yeah, okay, they're just ending the album on like a sort of a cop-out ending. But then the second time I listened to it, I was really sort of taken aback by some of the, the harmonic choices. There's some really nice chords in here that really do occasionally just pop out the mix and really satisfy me and and even though it is ambient music it still sounds like rock music and i think that's why it's so successful because it definitely leans into the post-rock genre of this album i'd say this closing track it's kind of the sound of when when you're you're sat in the sun and you can kind of see little glinting bits dancing around your field of vision i'd say yeah it's quite an abstract image but that's kind of what i got from listening to this song um, very nice, very nice outro. A pretty good album overall, I think. So, overall, while I do find the record God's P at State's End does dip in the middle with a few songs that perhaps are just all build and no payoff, I do find that some moments on here, especially during Job's Lament and near the end of the album, they do rival some of the best I've heard from the band to date. Um, interestingly enough, this is the first record I've reviewed from 2021, so you could say that At State's End is my favourite album so far of the year. And I'm going to give it a pretty decent 7 out of 10, I think. Yeah, 7 out of 10. I'm happy with that score. So, thank you for listening, as always, and I'll see you in the next review. Bye-bye. <laughs>